Hi, I'm Andy Hall. I'm the General Manager of Hall Fire and Safety Consultants out of the UK. In this presentation, I'm going to be talking to John Otterson. He's the founder and general manager of Daffo Foam Tech. Daffo Foam Tech are a privately owned firefighting foam manufacturer based out of Helsingborg in Sweden. They've been in business for 21 years now and have been selling a range of high performance foams to 65 countries around the world. So very successful in making high quality products. Um, today we're going to be talking about the transition to fluorine free foams, sometimes called SFFFs. So John, welcome. Um, Intershoot, seven years ago, so 2015, when we were at this show, all of the discussion was about the transition from C8 fluorinated chemistry to C6 fluorinated chemistry. Now, seven years is a pretty short time in our industry. So what's been happening? Well, I think it's, uh, it's fair to say it's been a very strong shift uh, to focus on uh, synthetic fluorine preforms. And uh, that's been driven by uh, the legislators um, and uh, regulations that now is, is uh, uh, restricting the use of PFAS in firefighting foam. And we've seen a very strong shift towards uh, the synthetic fluorine preform. And we, um, we have spent our time uh, looking very deeply into that uh, over the past seven years. So, so again, just reiterate for me, what, why, are we, why is this transition occurring? Well, I mean, it's occurring not because uh, of um, in this normal industry development. It's, uh, it's happening because the legislators and the regulators want to, to restrict the use of PFAS. And that's what, uh, what uh, initiates this uh, change towards uh, fluorine free form, as it's called. Yeah. Right. Very interesting. So, mm -hmm. um, as you said, it's legislation and we've got timelines in place in Europe. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's uh, there's uh, two different kind of timelines going on at the moment. You have uh, the, the phase out of the old C8 materials, and then uh, you have um, what's coming up now next uh, year. Or uh, we believe there's going to be new uh, regulations coming on um, on PFAS in general in firefighting form, which is then going to be setting some timelines for the phasing out of PFAS um, um, additives to form. Okay. Basically. So, but but with, you're still making fluorinated foam. So you know what what's Foamtech's position today? Well, I mean our position we're we're a manufacturer of firefighting foam. Our our mission is to make the very best foam we we can. We produce both fluorinated and unfluorinated foam, and we will carry on doing so for as long as we're allowed to do it, and as for as long as our customer uh, wants it and needs it. So. You know, we, we have no position on that other than we, we want to enable our customers to comply with regulations and legislations, which means that we obviously have a very strong focus on the development of the next gen product, the, the synthetic fluorine free foams over the past uh, several years. Okay, that leads into my next question, which is uh, I've been reading a lot of your magazine articles over the last six to nine months, mm -hmm. and I read about something called the Enviro Program. Yes. Um, what is the Enviro program, John? Well, I mean, when we um, started the development of uh, fluorine free foam, which uh, you know the market is asking us to do, um, I thought uh, making a, a foam without fluorine is, is almost like trying to go to the moon. So I had this this thought, you know, it's almost like uh, the Apollo program, it's the, the Enviro program, and I wanted everybody in, at Formtech to buy into this, the gravity of what we are trying to achieve. You know, this is a humongous big step to um, make products perform uh, uh, in various kinds of systems without the additive of fluorine. Mm. Um, so, you know, tell me more about what, what went on with it. You know, what's, you know, when we call, in the Enviro program, Give me the mechanics of the program. Well, I mean, the, the program uh, is, is obviously a development program on the chemistry side. Uh, we need to find formulations that are um, uh, going to work. So there's a lot of laboratory work, formulation work, but obviously you need to bring this to the test. So we perform a huge amount of fire testing. Uh, you know, you have to put it on the fire and we do these uh, fire tests. Uh, and we associate the, the foam qualities, as we call it, with the foam qualities of equipment which is out there in systems. So 
there's a lot of fire testing going on, Andy. Okay, and, and are we, you know, we're talking things like the small small scale EN tests, mm. you know, or you know, bigger scale, you know. Well, it, it depends upon your perspective. I mean, we're not doing baby tests. We're doing right. a proper UL and FM tests, with like four and a half square meter fire, norm fire. So there's some size yeah, to this. Typically, yeah. that's what nearly 200 liters of fuel, approximately, depending on the fuel. Yes. So, yes. so serious fires. Serious fires. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, I know that that's a lot of investment. Um, so. What would you say you've got out of the Enviro program so far? You know, are there any any specific lessons, or what would you say are the you know the takeaways you'd want to put in this presentation? Well, I, I think the the first takeaway is that the forms actually work. I mean, there's been a huge involvement since we started back uh, more than ten years ago with the with the first versions of these products. As the Enviro program has evolved, there's been a constant involvement of performance. So today we have really high performance uh, synthetic fluorine reforms in our Enviro program. Okay. Um, you, you touched on a little bit there of um, foam qualities. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, within Europe, we have a standard EN 1568, which is supposed to be a comparison of the quality, the performance of foam concentrates. Mm -hmm. And that has a rating system. So surely, if you know, if you've got a one A one A, you're making the best foam. Well, you know that's that's really um, a lot of people believe that, but uh, but uh, we have seen that the EN fifteen sixty eight is a, is a is a good test for doing sort of quality uh, comparisons. Uh, it's a norm test, um, and you always use the same nozzle. It's the Uni eighty six nozzle. It gives you a very good foam quality every single time. The problem with the EN 1568, it doesn't take into account the, the actual qualities of the foam that is being generated by an actual real-world system. And that's, that's the problem with the EN 1568. You can have a 1A rating, and then you discharge through a specific discharge device, and it doesn't work at all. And that's really the dynamics of these new fluorine-free foams. They're not as versatile. You know, they don't have that built-in um, magic from the fluorine. So they need to be put on with the right kind of quality. So, so I can see now why, why you know, we're, we're moving towards 1500 plus tests, mm -hmm. because we're having to look at all these specific discharge devices. So, um, so what discharge devices have you got test data on? Well, I mean, we, we have focused a lot on, on sprinklers. Uh, so we've done testing with normal standard uh, uh, sprinklers. Uh, and then obviously uh, with some top side devices such as foam makers and chambers. And we, there's a little bit difference between the testing because when you do a sprinkler test, um, you actually use the sprinkler. You install four sprinklers and you discharge these four sprinklers onto the fire and you see if you can put it out. Uh, with the large scale equipment, um, you, you have to do a different way. You need to collect uh, the foam qualities from the large scale equipment. And then you need to mimic that with your test nozzle so that you can perform the actual fire test with foam qualities that is similar to the large scale equipment. So it's a little bit different test, but we still use the same quality as in, in the real world system. Okay, so a lot of hardware involved. Did Foam Tech partner with anyone or did you just go and select hardware and, and no, I hate to say do random testing? Well, <laughs> we do both, but I mean, in general, I would say we partnered up with our, our, our partner Viking uh, Viking Corp, um, and we've used their sprinklers. Uh, they have a, a large array of sprinklers, obviously being one of the leading sprinkler companies of the world. Um, and we've also used their top side devices, such as foam makers and chambers and, and even monitors. And, and another side of this is uh, in the Enviro program is, is the testing of the foam with the proportioning devices as well, because that's that's a part of a system, isn't it? So, so it's the next thing I want to come to, because I, 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 you know, obviously we've talked about S triple Fs, you know, in their infancy at the moment, and mm -hmm. a number of manufacturers are sort of coming out with, you know, let's say one or two products, um, and saying, you know, this is our this is our fluorine free product. What what does the Enviro program give them, Phone Tech? Well, I mean, obviously we have we have a. Um, array of products. We have um, uh, different products for different missions. So we have, um, I think, uh, a dozen or more products at the moment. 
for each and every mission there is out there, like uh, you know the uh, emergency response or ARF uh, sprinkler systems uh, and uh, and so forth and so on. Marine is another uh, topic. So we have a, we have quite a large program at the moment. John, just to clarify there, you talked about an array of sprinklers. Are, are we talking about standard uh, non-aspirating sprinklers here? Oh, definitely. I mean, we, uh, we want to enable our customers to use uh, standard sprinklers, you know, normal, uh, everyday sprinklers. Uh, they are difficult because there's, there's no expansion, uh, drainage time is short, uh, very challenging testing with the standard sprinklers, but that, what people, that is what people have. Um, we, we don't want to, to have to say to customers, you, you have to go to these aspirated, more expensive, uh, higher flow, uh, air aspirated sprinklers. They are, they are not the same. See, that's interesting, John, because obviously that's a terminology thing you see, mm -hmm. even within UL, where they talk about a foam sprinkler. It, and that's not the same as a standard sprinkler, is it? No, nope, definitely not. And, uh, and you know, we, we want... Uh, to enable people to use what they have today, which is uh, the standard sprinklers. Right. Yeah. Okay. So would you like to talk in this presentation? Do you have any stars? Mm -hmm. You know, 17 products or so, mm -hmm. you know, are you really, you know, you've got some stars out there that you're waving their flags at the moment. Well, I, I, I probably got to mention at least two. You know, we have our uh, Enviro USP, which is our AFFF equivalent. And then we have our Enviro Arc, which is our three by three equivalent. Those are really um, very, very high end products. UL and FM approved. Uh, USP has an array of other approvals as well for many different missions. So those are probably the, the two stars in, in, in today's program. Okay. And then you, you just, just to reiterate again, you said the Enviro Arc is FM approved mm -hmm. with. Uh, standard sprinklers for polar solvents. Absolutely correct, and and I'm I'm really proud about Arc because we we brought the world first to the market. Uh, it was the first ever uh, fluorine-free foam to pass an FM test on a polar solvent through a standard sprinkler, and I think uh, it still is the only one out there with an approval. So we're very proud of uh, Arc. I must say, quite rightly so. That's not easy. Um, it's a difficult test. So. Again, we've got a few minutes left in this presentation. Are there any any other any other maybe not the you know maybe they're the co-stars that you want to mention? Well, I, I think you've mentioned some some specifics. We have Enviro Air, which is our ARF product. It's a low viscous um, ARF uh, foam with an IPCAO approval. Um, there are other products we have. We have a load of products, and we I would love to talk about them all, but. I guess the air is the is the most prominent one of those uh, additional products. Okay, so so an array of Enviro by Foamtech products, international listings and approvals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously we're st we are, we're still on this journey with S Triple Fs, but here's the question, I suppose: in the real world today, are you confident that an, an end user or a con consultant can design, install, and deploy alternatives to AFFF and alcohol-resistant fluorinated foams? Yes, uh, I think our approval speaks for themselves. We have UL and obviously our FM approval. They are system approvals, which you know enables uh, customers to deploy the foam uh, as a holistic approach uh, through a system design. So you have uh, the foam concentrate coupled with the proportioning and the discharge device. So definitely you can deploy these product, uh, products and, and the customers are already doing that, you know, in a big way. Yeah. So, so you've got some, you've got projects out there already? Definitely. A lot of big high-end customers who has taken the step to, to change the PFAS product out has chosen our, uh, our foam tech products. Yeah. Well, we won't ask for names today, but as we wrap this up, what I'd like to do is, again, I'll come back to, again, something I've read mm -hmm. in a number of your articles. Um, you know, quite a, quite a statement that decisions should be based on data, not opinions. We just, just elaborate and, and, and explain to me 
why I keep seeing this in your articles? Well, it, I think this is really key. It's always been the case. You need to base your design on uh, data and not uh, opinions or correlations or assumptions. But I think it's even more important now uh, with the floor and three farms to stick to data. And uh, we don't like opinion. Uh, we, we, that's why we do all the testing, Andy. I mean, we, we've done 1,500 tests and we're carrying on doing testing. We like to be able to base our, our recommendations to clients on data and not assumptions or opinions that is not rooted in, in actual testing. I suppose that comes back to the fluorine-free foams just don't work. Would you well, say that was an opinion? Well, it, it <laughs> probably was at the time, and, and uh, I think we've proven it uh, wrong uh, through our testing. Well, it uh, sounds like uh, the investment is paying off, John. Um, and I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to come and have a look through these products. Thank you. Thanks, Andy.